Well, I'm not going to need these anymore. I'm Gord Potter, and you're watching GP Outdoors. For as long as I've been hanging out with Guy and Husky Bob, it happens almost every time we go into the forest to fell trees. We drop the tree, we limit, and we're supposed to be cutting those logs or bucking them at eight foot lengths. It's the measurement we kind of agreed on after a couple of years of trial and error at different lengths. Eight feet gets you safely down the trail because the trails are about eight to nine feet wide. And it's a lot easier swinging those logs on the grapple when they're not 10 or 12 or 14 feet. Easy to get them into the log trailer. And at eight feet, you've got multiples of 16 inches. So you get six clean 16 inch firewood logs every time. Except when one of us starts to get lazy and doesn't really want to walk all the way back to the trailer to dig out the measuring tape. <laughs> so we kind of eyeball it. And this is what happens every time. What they call cookies or really short pieces that are a lot less than 16 inches. And they can't go in the stack, especially if you're stacking eight feet to the rafters. They go off in a pile on the other side of the boiler. They still burn, they still create heat. But as you start to learn and get more and more interested in this hobby of doing firewood, or maybe it's just an interest or you use it for heat, or maybe you're selling firewood now, you learn over time to work a little more effectively and a little more efficiently. So we don't just buck randomly anymore. We try to buck in measures. That way we always get clean 16 inch rounds off every log. <laughs> Except when we don't use a measuring tape. So after a few years of humming and on, being that Father's Day is just around the corner, I bought myself a logger's tape. I've been using it all week and I'm kind of loving it. And you might be thinking, well, GP, we know you love doing firewood and working out in the forest, but you're certainly no logger. And you're right, I'm not. But a logger's tape is just that. It's a very efficient, easy way of keeping track of your measures in the forest without having to go to a lot of work. And it works really well. And in fact, you also find that some builders or contractors, plumbers, electricians, use a logger's tape because how easy it is and how accurate it is. The tape is two-sided. What I learned the hard way is I thought they were standard, but they're actually not. They have different types of variations or options when you buy a logger's tape, whether it's from Steel or Husqvarna, Oregon, or Spencer, who by the way, I think is the one that makes pretty much all of them for them. This one I have in particular has inches and it also has markings for 16 inches for bucking your rounds. What I thought I was getting was a tape on the other side that also measured diameter, because it's pretty common and pretty handy, especially if you're somebody that has an interest in a portable mill and you enjoy milling boards. Because if you're like Guy, when we fell trees out in the forest, he's looking at which trees he wants to keep for the mill and which ones he wants to buck into firewood. Unfortunately, living in Canada, it appears I got the metric version. So I have feet and inches on one side, as well as my 16 inch red marks. And on the other side, I have meters and decimeters. <laughs> which is not really going to be helpful to me. But either way, whether it's bucking rounds at 16 inches or cutting or bucking logs at 8 feet, you need something to measure with. Which is why we've always had to pull tapes and throw them in the back of the trailer. Not anymore. Quick and efficient, let me tell you a few things about it. They're built pretty heavy duty. These things weigh a few pounds. You can get different types of ends on it. This one in particular has a nail or a pin end. And what I like about it, not only does it swivel easily, but it also has a positive stop. And I did check this against a yardstick and it is an exact measurement on this tape. You, sometimes you can get hooks on the end or you can get nails on the end. But either way, both ends pivot. Both your nail end for hooking it into the side of the log and the hook also swivels as well. That way it's not gonna get caught up on your wedge pouch or on the side of your belt. Most importantly though, the boys don't have any excuse now for not bucking at eight feet. <laughs> and it should minimize the amount of cookies or the waste that we get after we bring the logs up to the woodshed. So with Father's Day just around the corner, I thought I'd show you what I just got myself. 
And remember, you don't have to be a professional or a logger to have the right tools working in the forest, even if it is just a hobby or an interest. It makes the job a whole lot more pleasurable. Thanks for sticking around today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like the channel, please click subscribe, hit the like button, and if you want to know when I post the videos, just click that little bell. Have a wonderful Father's Day with your families. Please be kind to each other, and I'll see you again right here on GP Outdoors. Cheers. <laughs> Just as I expected, seven feet, two inches. Oh, and hey, if you're into cool tools, you might want to check out a new YouTube channel that just started this week. You might know Tony. He hangs out with Chris on In the Woodyard a lot. Well, he's finally.